Welcome to my lecture online. In a previous video we showed, or at least we talked about, how matter is really consistent of very tiny little nuclei with enormous boundaries around it created by the electrons. That essentially matter is huge empty space with tiny little pinpricks of matter called the nuclei and the electrons is what defines the boundary, the shell of the atoms. So we said, what if we could compress all that space from between the nuclei and compress nucleus against nucleus, how big would matter be? And as an example, we used that if we took all the people of the world, there's almost 8 billion of us, and we compressed everybody down to the point where it would be nucleus against nucleus, because essentially our bodies are mostly empty space, then the entire world population could fit into a single, and where do I have it? Right here, a single cubic centimeter. We wouldn't be any bigger than something about this size. I said the size of this pen cap. So now, we had, now the question came up, what if we took the entire universe and compressed it so it would be nucleus against nucleus? How big would the universe be? And of course we know the universe is absolutely enormous in size. Just a visible portion of the universe contains at least 200 billion galaxies and each galaxy contains many billions of stars. Probably the average size of a galaxy is about 25 billion times the mass of the Sun. Well, if we took all that matter, all those galaxies, and compressed them so that you have nucleus against nucleus, how big would it be? And we do have a hint because we have something called neutron stars. A neutron star is the end result of a giant star that collapses in on itself in such a way that the gravitational force has actually compressed it so that it's a nuclear ball. It is basically a huge nucleus pushed together. There's no longer any space between the nuclei. That's why it's called a neutron star. And those neutron stars, which are typically about two times the mass of the Sun, they have a radius of only about 10 kilometers. They're tiny compared to the size of the Earth, and of course minuscule compared to the Sun. It just completely compressed into a ball that's only about 20 kilometers across, with a radius of about 10 kilometers, which is only about 6 miles. So if we could compress the universe in the same fashion, all the stars, all the galaxies compress, so it's nucleus against nucleus, how big would it be? So I did a quick calculation, and if we then say that the mass of the universe, the mass of the universe is 200 billion galaxies with 25 billion solar masses in each galaxy on average, because I know that our Milky Way galaxy is a, has 100 billion ma uh, solar masses, but it's a bigger than average galaxy. So on average, perhaps 25 billion solar masses, 200 billion galaxies, that means the whole universe together of all the visible matter of the 200 billion or so galaxies is 5 times 21 solar masses. Wow! That is 5 trillion trillion solar masses. Is that? No, 5 billion trillion? How big is that? Trillion is 10 to the 12th, 10 to the 9th, so it would be 5 billion trillion solar masses. That's a number that's almost unimaginable. Well, if we were to compress it all, then we would have to find the ratio between the volume of the universe versus the volume of a neutron star. A neutron star has a, ra is a, a radius of 10 kilometers, so we have 4 thirds pi r cubed, r being the radius of that compressed universe, 10 kilometers being the radius of the compressed neutron star. And we set that equal to the ratio of the solar mass of the universe to the solar masses of a neutron star. The 4 thirds pi cancels out, r cubed equals 10 cubed times this. So r equals 10 kilometers times the cube root of 2.5 times 10 to the 21. And when I calculated it, it came out to be 136 million kilometers. Now the Earth's distance from the Sun is about 150 million kilometers, which means that the entire compressed universe would fit inside the orbit of the Earth. Wow, that's astounding. How do you make 200 billion galaxies out of a ball of nuclear matter that would fit inside the orbit of the Earth? Well, it's absolutely astounding. It's unimaginable that this little amount of material could fill out an entire universe with 200 billion galaxies and unimaginable number of stars. 
Well, that's surprising. It actually surprised me. I didn't think it would be that small, but there it is. Believe it or not. We didn't include dark matter. I did not include dark matter because we have no idea what dark matter is. Matter of fact, we don't even know if it really exists. And I have reasons to believe there's some doubt about that. Not saying it doesn't. It says there are some things that we discovered recently that might kind of go against the grain that maybe even dark matter doesn't even exist. But we have to look into that. And uh, that's probably worth a few more videos to describe the reason why I'm saying that. So, uh, but if we were to include dark matter, if it exists, then the dark matter has about five times the mass of visible matter, but we have no idea what the structure of that matter is. We don't know if it's made out of atoms or quarks or anything else. We have no idea whatsoever what it could be and if it even takes up any volume. So that's why I left off the dark matter, the dark energy, and we just stuck to the visible matter in the universe. <laughs> yeah, well, that's because it, at the beginning of the Big Bang, when we did not yet have nuclear matter, we didn't have nuclei, we had energy and we had particles, we don't quite know what it looked like, and it may be that the density of the early universe was perhaps more dense than this. Of course, we did have something that we threw in there because we can't explain the beginning of the universe quite well. Uh, we have trouble trying to explain the first one to the one times 10 to the minus 35 seconds of existence. And so we imagine that there might have been something called the inflationary period that magically within a very tiny, tiny fraction of a second, expanded the volume of the universe at an enormous rate, way faster than the speed of light. Um, so that's the only way we can explain that, that mystery. Yeah, it's a big mystery that, yeah, this is obviously way bigger than, than the beginning of the universe. But when you take into account the so-called inflationary period, if that really happened, then that explains our mystery to some extent. And not really, but... Um, um, at least it gives us some food for thought. How's that? <laughs> it's unsatisfactory, I must say, yes. But this is, this is just absolutely astounding. This is actually the first time I've ever done this, and uh, I'm, I'm blown away myself that how small a volume could make up 200 billion galaxies. I was kind of hoping it would go all the way down to the size of the grapefruit. <laughs> you were hoping for that. Well, we'll... So again, I thought at those kind of densities, we're thinking about more in terms of black holes, but then how can you start the universe out of a black hole? It, yeah, it, it's mysterious. We have no, no real good answers for those. Yeah. Well, we'll have to make some videos on that. Aren't you assuming that the proton doesn't have empty gaps inside also? Well, there you go. So uh, this is assuming that the protons and the neutrons stay intact. Now, obviously, an object this big. So when we talk about a neutron star, a neutron star would, would not even be a pinprick on this board relative to the Earth, right? A neutron star would be, you couldn't see it on this board. And the neutron star is about 20 kilometers across, about 12 miles across. And the density is so enormous that the forces, the compression forces at the center of a neutron star are so enormous that it almost is enough to crush neutrons and protons but we don't think it does. We already learned that from a previous video that protons and neutrons are made out of quarks and quarks are tiny little things that somehow make up this huge neutron and this huge proton. The mass of, of the three quarks combined are less than 1% the mass of the entire proton or neutron. So how do you expand the mass by a hundredfold by just putting three quarks in, in a certain arrangement? And so yes, it would be imagined that if you have a nuclear ball this big that the pressure inside would be so enormous that it would, the neutrons and protons would not stay intact and the whole thing would collapse into a black hole. Yep, so yeah, there's... there's no, like, there could be empty, a lot of empty space inside a proton. Oh, there is. A proton is, has this... So if you imagine a big proton with tiny little quarks, three quarks that make this big proton, then yes, protons again are full of empty space themselves and if you then if you were to compress this to the to a sea of quarks pushed together then yes you'd probably end up with a volume less than the size of the sun 
That would be an interesting calculation next. Well, we believe at this point, until proven otherwise, that quarks are point objects that cannot be divided down any smaller than that. They said that about the atoms. That's about. what they said about the atoms. <laughs> so yeah, we don't know yet. So, the building blocks in the universe are actually quite mysterious. <laughs>